the average conversion rate in e-commerce is only 2%. It means that 98% of people who visit your website leave it without ever buying from you. This is exactly where pre-purchase flows come in. In this video, I'll explain what they are, how to create them and how they can increase your overall conversion rate. Now, if this is the first time you meet me, my name is Konotas Vesotsky and I've been able to generate over 7 figures in sales for multiple e-commerce brands just from email marketing. I post weekly detailed videos to help e-commerce brand owners grow their business without relying on paid ads. Alright, before I cover how to create each flow step by step, I just want to briefly talk about what those flows in general are. So if you go to Klaviyo, um, you have something like analytics and metrics and pre-purchase flows are all flows uh, for metrics that happen before the purchase. Just like the name suggests, it's pretty self-explanatory, but what it really means is that you're targeting, first of all, people who joined your newsletter, then secondly, people who were active on site, then people who browsed any products, then people who added products to cart, and then people who started the checkout. So if you look at that from the bird's eye view, it's like covering whole funnel step by step by sending them emails. So uh, in Klaviyo, those metrics would be active on site for people who abandon the site, um, viewed product for people who viewed product, uh, self-explanatory, same for added to cart. Uh, if you don't have this trigger, make sure you just do it because if you use Shopify and Klaviyo, you have to set up and install custom snippet code. If you don't know how to do it, um, there will pop up uh, my video which shows you how to do it step by step in less than 10 minutes, so check it out. Then we have checkouts, uh, so yeah, checkout started, and that will be it. Also, like obviously added to list, uh, joined newsletter, and so on and so on. So those are key uh, pre-purchase flows, and this is how they work. So like you just set up each flow for each stage of the funnel, and if you want to create flow for each uh, for each step, you just go to flows, create flow, and then you create each one step by step. So you would just go um, so like welcome series. This would be the first one. Then uh, site abandonment, but you don't have this one as like as default. So I'll show you how to do it in just a second. Then you have browse abandonment, which is right there. Um, then add it to cart or like it's called checkout. Um, so why is it not here? Uh, abandoned. Yeah. So this is why it wasn't here. So yeah, like abandoned. Um, and then you have abandoned checkout, which would be this one. Um, or this one, like whatever. Uh, and then if you want abandoned cart, you must make sure that it's added to cart trigger. So this is actual ab abandoned cart flow. And then uh, one that isn't showing up is site abandonment. And this is something you have to do, which is create from scratch. I just called it site abandonment, as simple as that. You create flow. And then as trigger, you'll choose a metric, which is active on site. So you just go to metric, active on site. And this is how you create um, side development flow. So yeah, this is how you create those flows and what they are. Now let's dive into the structure and what to actually send in those flows. Okay, so here we are. This is the exact structure for each flow that you have to set up. And let's just go one by one or, or like how the overall mind map look like, looks like. So uh, in the first place, you have the names of the flows. So you can see four, but actually these are five flows because there's like abundant card and checkout are two separate flows. But here starting out, the content can be the same in both flows. Just make sure the trigger is different. Uh, then the trigger is also like written down so you know which one to choose and then for filters you also want to make sure that they are set up so for welcome series uh placed order zero time so this way we make sure that only people who joined welcome series are not people who subscribed through checkout and then bought from you because then they should be receiving customer thank you flow which is completely different it'll just mess up the whole customer journey if you don't have this filter set up then for those other flows, we're just excluding previous flow, just to make sure that if someone receives the email from site abandonment, they are also not receiving browse abandonment, car abandonment, or checkout. For example, if they go to checkout but left, it would be stupid. You would be just spamming them with like four or five the same emails. And I said spamming specifically because if you are sending far four or five emails at the exact same time, uh, having like different content but still like the of the, making the goal to come back to the website, it would be kind of spammy. So that's why you want to have those filters. Uh, I know some people also use smart sending. Personally, I hate using or like don't hate but don't like using smart sending. I just prefer to play with filters on the flow level as well as, as on the email level. Uh, so for example, when you have email number two, I'm applying additional filter uh, that people must who receive the email must receive the uh, must place order zero times since starting this flow because if someone converted after receiving the first email, there is no reason to send them email number two, three and four and so on and so on. So yeah, let's start with welcome series. This is obviously when someone joins your email list, uh, pretty straightforward. This flow is long, uh, usually you can make it even longer. This is the structure I would highly recommend and if you already have it set up and you have time and resources to do more, 
make it longer, just insert more content. It's also gonna make you more money. So there's really no downside to that. Just make sure the content is useful uh, and helpful, not some useless stuff. So yeah, email number one, giving incentive and leaving pretty straightforward. You want to give them the discount code and just make sure that they can buy right away. Then email number two is plain text from the founder, like a story, we love stories, there's often associate. And I guess that if you have a brand, uh, you have also a decent story why you started it. So people will be like, okay, that's cool, uh, I'll buy from them. And we send it as plain text to make sure that the deliverability is okay. But there's also the other aspect to that, which is being friendly and like just having being native to the platform. Um, receiving plain text emails is something that will help you stand out because most brands, they send like, you know, beautiful designed emails. I'm not saying you shouldn't do it. You should definitely send them as well. But just sending one uh, once in a while an email like that is cool to stand out and be like, okay, that's something different. And it also feels more, feels more personal. So yeah, that's why we do it. Email number three, brand story. So yeah, like this story about the founder, like exactly like their story, how they got started, but then brand story. So the overall idea behind the brand, the mission, vision, and so on, just to share a little bit what you're doing. Then email number four, which is USP, what makes you different, why people should choose your brand uh, versus some other brands like your competitors. Email number five, social proof. So people love it. It could be reviews, success stories, testimonials. Social proof is key these days. So you just must have it in the customer, uh, in, sorry, in the welcome series flow. Then email number six is education, for example, blog article. And if you don't have a blog article, which I think you, not all of you might have it, then what you want to do is create some sort of other educational email. So we can just Google some other blog articles relevant to your niche or product and send this type of email, which is educating people about the product, about the problems and so on and so forth. Email number seven, best sellers plus reviews and testimonials. So again, we're acknowledging social proof, but also give, showing them some best sellers because if they didn't buy, uh, by now, then probably something is off. So we just want to show them the best sellers and so uh, some so social proof to make the conversion rate even higher. Email number eight, more education. Uh, again, if you don't have like a blog article, some type of emails that work well are Mythbuster or other very packed email. But Mythbuster is great. So pretty much the idea behind the email is that you know um, this product won't work because X. So you just com uh, combine a bunch of uh, myths, like three to four, and you just solve them by showing, okay, you're wrong, this is actually a myth, it's not true. It works extremely well, solves a bunch of objections, so I recommend you do it. And then email number nine is the final reminder about the incentive, and you send it only to non-buyers. So when I was talking about filters on the email level, this is exactly where you would apply it. Uh, other than that, what you can also do is have like email number email number nine as number 10, which is the final reminder. And email number nine, for example, could be your discount got upgraded. I also recommend if you have the opportunity, your margins allow you to do so, and you want to do it, to test a bunch of offers. For example, if you're starting with 10% off, then show them like 10 bucks off, maybe free gift, maybe free shipping, whatever. Just try a bunch of offers to make sure that you convert those people. Email number, uh, sorry, flow number two and three, which will be on card and checkout. Again, the content for those can be the same. Uh, if you're starting out and don't have much time, this is what I recommend you do. So yeah, email number one is just reminding about the carrier checkout, then give an incentive in email number two, talk about your USP. Uh, then in email number three, you can show some social proof, reviews, testimonial success stories. Email number four is urgency and the last incentive reminder. So again, uh, we all usually end the flows with urgency and reminders just because they work so well. So that's what I would recommend you do. If you have more capacity, you can make this flow longer. Uh, usually I go with five emails and it's like ideal for me. Uh, so I go email number one as it is. I don't give an incentive email number two. I just make it purely about USP. So I talk more about USP without giving an incentive. And then I give away the incentive in email number three. Email number four is usual, just social proof. Uh, and number five will be urgency and incentive reminder. Then browse abandonment. So we just remind people about the products, email, email number one. Then email number two is talking about USP, stating the benefits. Obviously it always benefits over features, but you also want to cover some of, of the features of the product because people still care about them. And in email number three, oh, sorry for uh, dragging that, email number three, you're giving an incentive and showing a social proof. Again, for uh, all my customers, I make it five emails long. This is like the basic version that you have, uh, you must have. But if you have more time and resources to do the longer one, then email number three will be just purely giving an incentive and showing best sellers. Email number four would be social proof. And email number five would be uh, a reminder about the incentive. Then the last flow, which is side abandonment, uh, and right there, we just send one email. 
which is promoting best sellers and helping make a choice. So the reason why we are not sending a bunch of emails there is because people were just active on site, so they didn't click any product. So we don't want to send them like, you know, five emails long sequence because they'll just get mad, they will get annoyed. They are not so interested in the brand, but you still want to be on top of their mind with this one email, uh, showing them best sellers, asking if they need any help, maybe they're confused, to so just make sure that everything is clear and help them make a choice. Now, you must have those flows because, as I said, they all work very well to increase the conversion rate. And actually, uh, we onboarded last week one of our clients who was making like 2% of the revenue from uh, email marketing. And what we've done in the first week, actually in the first four days, uh, we set up all of those five flows in the first four days. And the revenue in the last seven days from Clavio is 26%. So by having and we also sent like five campaigns, but those flows overall generated 22 extra, 22% extra revenue in just seven days. So did, that's why it's so powerful because we also saw like the overall improvement in the conversion rate sidewide, right? Because we were sending emails only to people who left the website. So they weren't to buy anyway, probably, unless they got a retargeting ad and click that. But right here you are sending emails for free. You're giving yourself a bunch of chances to convert them. So that's why you need those flows. And if you set them up properly, they'll generate a ton of, the ton of, a ton of sales, increase the revenue significantly. So that's why I recommend you do it as up uh yeah this is the exact structures you can follow i will link the mind map in the video description so we can open uh, open it and look at it anytime you want and that's how i will go about it setting up those flows can take you countless hours and cost you a dozens of thousands of dollars in opportunity cost but i can help you handle your email marketing and set up a proven and profitable system that will generate sales right away all you have to do is book a call with me using the link in the video description down below those pre-purchase flows are absolutely vital for your e-commerce business but now you know how to set them up so make Make sure you do it and you will see anywhere between 10 to 20 percent more revenue every single month if you want to learn more about clavio or email marketing in general make sure you check out my playlist where i have a bunch of guides and easy to follow tutorials thanks for watching this video make sure you like subscribe and see you in the next one take care bye